Hi, in this video, we will talk about plasmid and its features as a cloning vector. So, plasmid is an extra chromosomal DNA other than the bacterial chromosome, which generally encodes for some uh, antibiotic resistance. And generally, as a chemical nature, they are small, circular, double stranded DNA molecule. Now, mostly the plasmids are present in bacteria. However, some archaebacteria also has these plasmids. Now, in this video, we would look at how plasmid could be a useful tool for genetic engineering and what are the important features that make the plasmid as an important cloning vector. So, in a copy machine, we give our document and select the number of copies and we obtain as an output the number of copies that we want. In genetic engineering, sometimes we want our gene of interest in more copies. But how do we use a copy machine to copy our DNA? So we put it in a vector, which is generally a plasmid, and put the plasmid inside a molecular copy machine, which is bacteria, and ask the bacteria to copy it. Now, first of all, as the bacteria grows in optimal growth conditions and temperature, the plasmids which holds the gene of interest also grows and thus we have more copies of our gene of interest. Now some of the bacteria inherently maintains a low number of uh, copies of plasmid and some bacteria has high number of plasmids. So this copy number of plasmid is a regulated process and if you want to know more about how a bacteria can regulate its copy number, then you should watch another video about plasmid copy number regulation in the same playlist. Now, let's just move out, move out. And the plasmid copy number regulation is important because if the plasmid copy number is too high, then it causes an energy burden to the bacteria. And if it's too low, then there is a risk of losing the plasmid or lo losing the antibiotic resistance or other important gene along with the plasmid. And that could be evolutionary detrimental for the bacteria. Now, let's just quickly look at the overall key features of a cloning vector. Now, ideal cloning ve vector should have low molecular weight because first of all, if you have low molecular weight, it's easy to handle, it's resistant to shearing and isolation and transformation into the bacteria is easy. Second, it should have selectable and screenable markers such that it can be distinguished from the non-recombinant ones. And most importantly, it should have a multiple cloning site which has all sort of large variety of restriction sites to cut the plasmid and insert our gene of interest. Now, one of the most important site in the plasmid is the origin of replication. Now, origin of replication is uh, the site where the replication of the plasmid starts and it's regulated by several sense and antisense RNAs, which I'm not going to talk about in details. However, a plasmid inside the bacteria need to also replicate, right? When the bacteria is growing, the plasmids need to be re replicated and segregated, just like the bacterial chromosome. So origin of replication inside a plasmid is very important. Apart from the origin of replication, the most important site in the plasmid is the multiple cloning site. And the multiple cloning site is the site where you put your gene of interest. And because multiple cloning site has multiple uh, restriction sites, you can cut it there and cut the gene of interest with the same restriction enzyme and put the gene of interest in the multiple cloning site in the cassette of the plasmid backbone. So multiple cloning site generally encompasses several different restriction enzymes. Some give rise to sticky ends, some give rise to blunt ends, which we would be talking later. Now, if we remember the cloning workflow, so first step is restriction digestion of the vector with specific restriction enzyme that are present in the multiple cloning site. Similarly, you have to cut the gene, gene of interest with the same restriction enzyme. Then the ligation step comes where you join the gene of interest with the plasmid backbone and just just you are inserting the gene of interest in the plasmid backbone then you transform the plasmid into the bacteria and ask the bacteria to grow it in number grow, uh, grow the gene of interest in number now as the bacteria grows in the culture media the number of the gene 
is increased. So simple, right? Actually not. So here is the problem. In the culture, there are some bacteria which would eat up the plasmid when we are transforming it. But there are some bacteria which won't take the plasmid. Now at the end of the amplification process of the bacterial growth curve, how would you understand that which bacteria has taken up the plasmid and which bacteria has not? So you need a distinguishable marker, right? So that's why selectable markers come into the picture. In case of selectable marker, it selects the bacteria against some selection pressure. And most of the cases, the selectable marker are an antibiotic resistance gene encoded by the plasmid. Simply, if we put antibiotic in the bacterial culture media, it should die. The bacteria should die and should not grow, right? Normal bacteria. Only ba those bacteria which have the antibiotic resistance gene against those antibiotic that we have added would grow in that media. So in the plasmid, if we have the antibiotic resistance gene, then it would survive and the plus and, and the and the bacteria which doesn't have the antibiotic resistance gene, it would die. Thereby we can get rid of those bacteria which have not taken up the plasmid. But the problem is of twofold. Here is the second one. The second one is even if the plasmids we have digested, we have ligated, but some of the plasmid could get self ligated and not have the restriction, uh, not have the gene of interest. It is just a self ligation plasmid. Now, how do we differentiate between these two varieties, whether the bacteria has taken up the plasmid with gene of interest or it has only taken up the self ligated plasmid? In order to understand that, we need screening markers. Mostly in multiple cloning sites, there are certain genes which works like screening markers. One such example is LACZ. Now, we all know LACZ is a component of the LAC operon, which codes for beta galactosidase. And beta galactosidase can convert XGAL, a colored product, a, a, a variant of lactose, and that kind of converts XGAL to a colored product. Now, if the bacteria is transformed with the plasmid having the lac Z as a selectable marker gene, then the bacterial colony would be blue in color because this beta galactosidase is active and they have converted the colony into a blue color, right? Now, somehow, if you insert the gene in a manner that the lac Z gene is disrupted, so beta galactosidase production is gone and you don't have any color formation. So now if you transform this plasmid and try to plate it in a petri dish, you would have colonies which are all white in color or colorless. So in a, we can clearly understand the blue colonies correspond to the self ligated plasmid or undisrupted uh, screenable marker gene and the white colonies correspond to the disrupted screenable marker gene where we understand in those colonies the marker gene is disrupted by our gene of interest so those white colonies are of our interest so this is how using we can using a selectable mark a screenable marker we can screen for recombinant colonies right now once we understand the recombinant colonies are the white ones we can script this, them out and grow them in bulk cultures and later that could be used for further downstream processes which we would be talking in this whole video series. So let's just get a summary of what we learned so far. So we learned that the plasmid has the origin of replication which allow it to replicate inside the bacteria individually and it has multiple cloning sites having several cutting sites or several restriction sites where which we can use to cut and insert our gene of interest. This has a selectable marker which selects again those bacteria which has not taken up the plasmid versus those bacteria which has taken up the plasmid and a select screenable marker which can distinguish versus a recombinant versus a non-recombinant uh, plasmid, right? So in this video, we get an overview of plasmids. In subsequent videos, we get into details of these features and how it could be useful for a molecular biologist to clone certain genes and we would look at different type of plasmids and their uses as well. For now, please, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe. And if you have specific questions, you can ask me in the comments.
Tout compris.